Professor Reichman would like to get the last word in. No, no, sir. There are a few moments in each of our lives that make a difference. The moment that we met, and as a consequence, the Lotus School of Government was, was established, was a unique moment, which uh, made a change in the entire academic landscape of Israel and the kind of um, a school that is committed uh, to the future of the country in a way that nobody, no other school, no other school of government definitely uh, was before. It is with uh, tremendous gratitude and appreciation that this honor is bestowed on you and there is no other person that deserves it more than you. Thank you. And Jonathan, you are the only person here who has pronounced my last name correctly. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, members of the panel, participants, I'm delighted to be here. And I'm thinking back as I was sitting here to 1983, I was a young, very young, Assistant Secretary of Defense of the Pentagon when I was called in by, at that time, Secretary of Defense Caspar uh, Weinberger. And he said to me about, he, we spoke, he said, do you know anything about terrorism? And I said, a little bit, I have two adolescent daughters. and. He laughed and he said, seriously, there is a meeting of experts on terrorism and uh, we've asked you to be the representative of the Pentagon. I remember, the, I remember going there, it was in Langley, and there were 26 people and these were the experts in the world and we spoke about what terrorism was at that time. It wasn't until very near the end of the conversation that my counterpart from France said, how about radical Islam? There was a silence in the room because no one knew how to react. It was the first time I heard about terrorism coming from um, any other place, but at that time, what was the Soviet Union and uh, certain parts of um, Asia. It's amazing what has happened in the course of um, 27 years. And today, looking around the room about what is counterterrorism, it is absolutely amazing what has happened. That was in 1983. Uri Reichman was talking about a very special meeting we had. It was somewhere around 1993, um, 94, when my uh, secretary came in and said, there's a Mr. Reichman to see you. So my first feeling was it was Paul Reichman from Canada who was going to talk about a major uh, real estate project. I realized instantly that was not when, when um, Rui Reichman came in, it would not be about a um, project in Canada or Canary Wharf in London, but rather about a school. And as he talked, he made IDC come alive. And we talked about government and the School of Government, we talked about some of the things that could be done. And very much, it changed a lot of my feelings. I had been involved in schools and education prior to that. But after that meeting, not only do I take great pride in what's happening here at IDC, but I take great pride in the schools that 
uh, my foundations put forth. But again, I thank you for the Guardian of ICT Award. Also, as president of the World Jewish Congress, I am, pers I am personally dedicated to the security and well-being of Israel and the entire Jewish people. As an American and as a citizen of the world, I am guided by the principles of, de of democratic and liberal values and the pursuit of world peace and security. After 9-11, which was the worst terrorist atrocity in modern history, it became clear that violent Islamic extremists, motivated by radical religious beliefs, would challenge the security and stability of the world, and they'd be doing it for many years to come. These religious terrorists murder innocent people as a, because they're who they consider to be infidels. Unfortunately, it seems that this whole ter terrorism aspect is growing. And what's very interesting, in many ways, many of these terrorist organizations are enjoying broad support. Their bloody assaults are energized with the battle for the hearts and minds of millions in the Muslim and non-Muslim world. Today, we're witnessing the emergence, not only of an Iranian regime, but an entire um, Muslim world dedicated in many ways um, to their beliefs. I'm talking about the radical elements, not the, not the, not the others. And we see now, and we hear about Iran talking about the uh, threat to, de to um, exterminate the state of Israel with these weapons. Unfortunately, today, September 12th, the international community is bearing the rotten fruits of the wrong-headed policies that turn a blind eye to the threat of Islamic radicalism. Many of us and many people in the world today still cling to the belief that this is a problem that can go away. It's not going away. It will continue. And everything you people can do, the participants here on counterterrorism, will help stop it. But it will continue. And the only thing we can do is fight this battle. Hamas, Hezbollah, um, jihads around the world are having a major effect. History has also told us that we can't be silent. We have to look and, and stand out. And if we remain silent, other peaceful countries and communities will also be attacked. In, in, in the same period of time. There is no country today that is immune to the threat of global terrorism. Delegates here, panel, friends of IDC, there is an enormous challenge before us that we all have to face together as participants and also as participants in this, in this important conference. There'll be a lot of questions to be asked. How do we stop this dangerous trend? How do we prevent the next terror attack? These are questions that today and tomorrow and the next day we will not walk away with answers, but we'll get closer to the correct answer. We, the citizens of the world, are determined to overcome these threats together with God's help. I am, con I am confident we will succeed. I thank you and I thank IDC for this wonderful award. Thank you.